This LOS is define and compare the spot curve, yield curve on coupon bonds, par curve, and forward curve. Okay, recall that this LOS is define and compare the spot curve, yield curve on coupon bonds, par curve, and forward curve. So when it says the word define, that's definition. So again, I've shown this before. If you want the definition of the spot curve, go into the glossary. Spot curve is a sequence of yields to maturity on zero coupon bonds, sometimes called zero or strip curve because coupon payments are stripped off the bonds. And then if you scroll up, you can see the definition for the par curve. It's a sequence of yields to maturity such that each bond is priced at par value. The bonds are assumed to have the same currency, credit risk, liquidity, tax status, and annual yields stated for the same periodicity. And finally, scrolling up to the forward curve, you can see it's a series of forward rates, each having the same time frame. The maturity structure of interest rates. So at any point in time, the price of a risk-free single unit payment, for example, one dollar, one euro, one pound, at time t is called the discount factor, with maturity t denoted by pt, okay? And the yield to maturity of the payment is called a spot rate denoted by rt, which we have right here, okay? The discount factor PT and the spot, spot rate RT for a range of maturities where T is greater than zero are called the discount function and the spot yield curve, or more simply, the spot curve respectively. The spot curve represents the term structure of interest rates at any point in time. Note that the discount function completely identifies the spot curve and vice versa. The discount function and the spot curve contain the same set of information about the time value of money. The spot curve shows for various maturities the annualized return on an option free and default free zero coupon bond, zero for short, with a single payment of principal at maturity. And again, that's just what we looked at in terms of the definition. The spot rate as a yield concept avoids the complications associated with the need for a reinvestment rate assumption for coupon paying securities. Because the spot curve depends on market pricing of these option free zero coupon bonds at any point in time, the shape and level of the spot yield curve are dynamic, that is continually changing over time. We'll just take a quick uh, screenshot of the ebook and you can see here that a government bond spot curve is illustrated in exhibit five here for maturities ranging from one to 30 years. Now this is an important point, we've seen this before. The annual yields are stated on a semi-annual bond basis, which facilitates comparison to coupon bearing bonds that make semi-annual payments. So remember when we did our calculations with regards to the yield on zero coupons, we were assuming a semi-annual bond basis. So that reinforces that fact. If I scroll down here, you can see that uh, it's upward sloping, the yield to maturity. Uh, we're starting over here, time zero, up to 30 years. And here's the interest rate, uh, just around 3%, going up to close to 5%, okay? So it says this spot curve is upward sloping and flattens for longer terms to maturity. Longer term government bonds usually have higher yields than shorter term bonds. This pattern is typical under normal market conditions. Sometimes a spot curve is downward sloping in, the sh in, the, in that shorter term yields are higher than longer term yields. This downward sloping spot curve is called an inverted yield curve. The theories that attempt to explain the shape of the yield curve and its uh, implications are covered in later readings, okay? The default risk-free spot curve is a benchmark for the time value of money received at any future point in time as determined by the market supply and demand for funds. It is viewed as the most basic term structure of interest rates because there is no reinvestment risk involved. The stated yield equals the actual realized return if the zero is held to maturity. Thus, the yield on a zero coupon bond maturing in year T is regarded as the most accurate representation of the T year interest rate. A forward rate is an interest rate that is determined today for a loan that will be initiated in a future time period. The term structure of forward rates for a loan made on a specific initiation date is called the forward curve. 
Forward rates and forward curves can be mathematically derived from the current spot curve. Denote the forward rate of a loan initiated T star years from today with tenor further maturity of T years by F brackets T star comma T. Consider a forward contract in which one party to the contract, the buyer, commits to pay the other party to the contract, the seller, a forward contract price denoted by F brackets T star comma T at time T star years from today for a zero coupon bond with maturity t, t years and unit principal. This is only an agreement to do something in the future at the time the contract is entered into, thus no money is exchanged between the two parties at contract initiation. And don't worry, we're going to learn a lot more about forwards and futures later on in the derivatives, okay? At T star, the buyer will pay the seller the contracted forward price value and receive from the seller at time T star plus T, the principal payment of the bond, defined here as a single currency unit. So the forward pricing model describes the valuation of forward contracts. And again, we're going to see that more in the, in the um, section on the derivatives. The no arbitrage argument that is used to derive the model is frequently used in modern financial theory. The model can be adopted to value interest rate future contracts and related instruments such as options on interest rate futures. So just a little quick review here. The spot zero yield curve, it's the yield to maturity of government zeros. Same currency, credit risk, liquidity, tax treatment, and coupon reinvestment risk. There is no reinvestment risk because it, they're, they're zeros. However, not actively traded across all maturities, so yield cur curves are constructed using coupon bond yields. So the forward rates is a yield curve or term structure shows yields for bonds at different maturities. Ideally, the bonds would have the same currency denomination, credit risk, liquidity, coupon rate, reinvestment risk, tax treatment, and periodicity and yield calculation method. Now we're looking at the coupon bond yield curve. We look at semi-annual bonds issued for specific maturities. For example, one year, three year, five, seven, and 10 years. Newly issued bonds are close to par, similar tax effects, and actively traded, similar liquidity. Other maturities are based on linear interpolation. Yields for 1, 3, 6, and 12-month maturities often must be converted from discount basis to semi-annual bond equivalent basis. So we've seen that before. Less than one year is money market, and so they're often quoted at a discount basis or as an add-on rate basis, and they must be converted to a semi-annual bond equivalent yield, which we did in a previous LOS. The par curve is obtained from a spot curve. On a coupon payment date, the following equation can be used to calculate a par rate given the sequence of spot rates. So what coupon would a bond at each maturity need to, be, need to pay to be priced at par? So we got 100 equals payment divided by 1 plus Z1 plus payment divided by 1 plus Z2, discounted for two periods, plus payment divided by 1 plus Z3, discounted for three payments, okay? So um, we're going to use the spot rates to solve for payment at each maturity, and the forward yield curve shows the rates for future periods, for example, the one-year rate, two years, and three years from now. So let's just do a quick practice question here to help consolidate some of our understanding. An investor considers the purchase of a two-year bond with a 5% coupon rate with interest paid annually. Assuming the sequence of spot rates shown below, the price of the bond is closest to A, 101.93, B, 102.85, or C, 105.81. So you can see time to maturity one year, the spot rate is 3%, and time to maturity two years, the spot rate is 4%. You can see this calculation is not difficult. It's just calculating the price of the bond, which is the um, present value of the all the future cash flows, but we're using the spot rates to discount for each uh, period. So we're going to discount, and it's a uh, interest paid annually, 5%. So that's five on 100, okay? So we're just gonna discount by 1.03, plus we're gonna get our principal back, plus our coupon, so 105, and we're discounting back at 4% for two years. So these calculations are really easy. The present value is 485 plus 97.08, so our price is 101.93, and the correct answer is A. So these are really easy. It's calculating the price of a bond based
based on spot rates. So we'll just do another quick practice question. An analyst has gathered the following information. So there's years one, two, and three. Three-year treasury, 3.75%. But then we have the treasury spot rate for one year, 3%. Two years, 3.5%. And uh, three years, 4%. So based on the arbitrage-free valuation approach, a $1,000 face value bond that pays a 5% annual coupon and matures in three years has the current market value closest to A, $1,027.75, B, $1,028.67, or C, $1,034.85. Okay, this question is not difficult. Each cash flow is discounted by the appropriate spot rate, and here we're using the treasury spot rate. Uh, this is given here as red herring information in case somebody makes a mistake. And so you can see for year one, 3%. So it's a $1,000 face value times 5%. It's paid annually. So we know the coupon is 50. So we know that our cash flows are 50 in year one, 50 in year two, and then we get our principal back. So it's 1,050 in year three. So we're discounting by 3%, 3.5% for two years, and 4% for the three years. So we get the present value of the cash flows, 48.54 plus 46.68 plus 933.45 gives us 108, uh, 1,028 and 67. So the correct answer is B, okay? So again, these questions are fairly easy. It's calculating the price of a bond based on the treasury spot rates. So we're not using the time value of money functionality in the calculator using uh, one rate. Uh, we're using the treasury spot rates. So we have to discount back each individual cash flow by the appropriate treasury spot rate for that year. Very easy present value calculations. Okay, this is a practice question. And again, I said a little bit trickier because you gotta get the right rate, okay? So this is just a little bit of an extra twist. So given the data in the table below, the price of a 3% coupon corporate bond maturing in two years is closest to what? So they're giving us periods one, two, three, four, yield to maturity. Uh, spot rate and a corporate spread. Okay, I won't read all the numbers. I'll just leave you to the table. And so this, uh, the choices are A, $97.19, B, $98.12, or C, $100.04. Okay, the reason why I said this is a little bit tricky is because they're giving you four periods, uh, but number one, it's a corporate bond, so we have to assume that it's a semi-annual uh, payment on the coupon. And they're giving us four periods, but uh, the spot rates are given as annual, okay? So that's one thing that you need to know is that these are given as annual rates. And so we've got the spot rate plus the corporate spread. So what do we need to do? You can see here for the period one, what is my discount rate? It's going to be 3.5%, but I need to divide by two, and that's going to give me 1.0175, okay, just bring up the calculator, and uh, 3.5 divided by two, and that's giving me 1.75, okay, percent, so that's 1.0175, when we do uh, cash flow divided by one plus the interest rate, okay? So that was the little trick here, is that um, you had to assume, because it says a corporate bond, that it's semi-annual, so it, for our cash flows then, 3%, uh, that, that would be $1.50 semi-annually. So we can see cash flow one, semi-annual, cash flow two, $1.50, cash flow three, and then it's saying for a two years, so that would be one year, and then the second year you get your principal back plus your, um, plus your uh, coupon payment of $1.50. And then the discount rates, as I said, a little trick there is that the spot rate is given as annual, so you add the two together and uh, then divide by two, and that gives you your appropriate discount rate, okay? So I won't uh, bring up the calculator to do all the math, but you can see, again, it's just a very simple present value calculation, but the little twist on that is that the spot rates are given as annual, so you have to add the corporate spread, then divide by two, and uh, you had to discount the, uh, assume that it was corporate, so it was semi-annual coupons. So a little bit of a twist, a little bit of a trick there, but not too difficult once you, uh, the calculations are easy. Okay, one last practice question to finish this LOS. An analyst has gathered the following information. So we've got four periods, and it's showing the years, half year, one year, one and a half, two. 
And we've got the annual par yield to maturity, bond equivalent yield, 3%, 3.3, 3.5, 3.9. We have a theoretical spot rate, bond equivalent yield, 3%, 3.3, 3.51, 3.92. .3 and then we've got six-month forward rates, bond equivalent yield. So the value of a single default-free cash flow of 50000 at the end of period four is closest to A, 46265 B, 46299 or C, 46316 dollars. Okay, this is a nice question to end on because it brings up a couple of little points here. So the correct answer is A, the theoretical spot rates for Treasury securities represent the appropriate set of interest rates. So they gave you some red herring information here about which rates to use. So this is the rate that you need to use, and it's 50,000 at the end of period four, okay? So you can see there's the rate 3.92 is the appropriate rate that you should use, and it's a single default free cash flow of 50,000, okay? So you can see here I've got the algebra, that's just gonna be 50,000, and remember, we're gonna use the semi-annual convention, so it's divided by one plus 0 0.0392 divided by two, okay? Uh, to the power of four, uh, and that's going to give us uh, 46,265. But an easier way that I like to do it, the TED way, is remember we're using the semi-annual convention, so we're going to check that the periods per year is, is uh, two. We're just going to do 50,000. That's our future value that we're going to receive at the end of four periods, which is two years. So we can do two, second, and n, n equals four, correct? And our interest rate, we're just going to type in the 3.92 because that's the interest rate that we're going to use. There's no payment because it's a single cash flow. And we're just going to compute the present value. And voila, we've got 46.264.80. So the correct answer is A. I myself, oh, sorry, just uh, circle that a little bit better. The correct answer is A. I myself like to use the time value of money functionality with regards to zero coupons, but just remember that you need to have your periods per year set at two, and uh, then calculating the price, the value, is very easy calculation, okay? That's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.